The Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 11, Teaching 320. Blessed be all for having the presence of his Lord humanized on earth. Happy is the human race for having received that inheritance of love. My existence in the world through Yashawana, I spent in the lands of Palestine. My preaching lasted only three years. Few were villages I visited, and the crowd that accompanied me to Golgotha was not very large. However, that word that vibrated on the lips of Yashawana was bequeathed to humanity of all times. I have no need to go looking for disciples in all the countries of that time, because I knew that my word, like a seed, would soon come out of that land to spread throughout all the peoples of the world. Those who listened to Yashawana and witnessed his death were a representation of all the generations that would later come because the presence of my doctrine and the love with which shed that blood it had to be for everyone. Do not judge those people for not having recognized the Messiah in Yashawana and for having sacrificed him. Do not be scandalized thinking that the one that they mocked was God himself. Truly I tell you that judge is only me. Many of those who judge that people as wicked, and they do not forgive him for having sacrificed the master, they carry a decay in their heart without realizing it, because they have taken a place as judge that is not theirs. If when Yashawana was subject to the cross, dying in front of a mob that enjoyed his sufferings, he exclaimed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. That same phrase could be repeated daily by me for you, because knowing my name since you were born, and carrying in your consciousness my teaching, my commandments, and my laws, you do not cease to offend me or mock my maxims. Three ages of spiritual revelations have come to you, and yet humanity has not built the temple that I hope. However, in this third era, men will raise up in the depths of their hearts the tabernacle, where there will be the ark, and there which will be the spirit, keeping in its interior the tablets of the law that is in your consciousness. The moral and spiritual transformation of humanity is needed because you have strayed far from the principles that were revealed. You cannot imagine unless to believe in a world where love, peace, and justice reign. I tell you that you cannot believe in all this because you have not wanted to analyze the meaning of my word or of my works. If you dedicate a little of your time to spiritual meditation, you will achieve great inspirations and you would get wisdom. Two thousand years ago, who of the people imagined the current world that you have made with the force of your intelligence? Nobody. Therefore, many of the ancient prophecies that announce this world of now, they were not believed. I am prophesying you a new world and a spiritualized humanity and again, when this world is known, again, it will not be believed. Generations and more generations will pass. The pride of men will unleash storms and floods, pests and plagues, and the woe of humanity will move the spaces. But after all this, the new inhabitants begin a life of reflection and spirituality, taking advantage of the immense wealth of experience that past generations bequeath to them and the divine seed will begin to germinate. The divine germ exists in every spirit, since it is sprouted from me, and just as your children inherit the traits or character of their parents, the spirits will also reveal at last what of their heavenly father they have inherited, love. Remember that day, for love of you, as a man I expired on the cross. Remember my passion, yes, but stop doing it in the traditional way that you have used for centuries, an external and material form that has not left seed in your spirit, because you have not deepened in search of meaning and essence. I see that to move your heart, you dramatize with representations and bloody images of my death, that you cry and dress in mourning as if a man had just died, and that every year you are going to offer condolences to the mother without realizing what you're doing. Why give condolences to Mary 
if she has lost no one, since he who expired on the cross rose to eternal life. Why cry for me if I am beyond pain and death? Truly I tell you, you should better cry for yourselves and feel sadness for your sins and mourn in your heart for many virtues and noble sentiments have died in you. I would like that, without waiting for anniversaries or dates or traditions, you would meet in congregations or within your families and reviewing those examples and works I have taught you in the second era, you would gather full spirituality and evelation to meditate and analyze my word because then you would gain a profit for your spirit and discovering the meaning or essence of my works and my words. Do not try to feel pity for me because there is nothing in my spirit that can inspire pity in others but instead be inspired by that love that through a life I have tested you and apply that piety that despite offending and those remorse to your fellow men among which there are thousands who are worthy of all compassion and all mercy some because they suffer intensely others because they have sunk in the mire of the vice others because they do not know the light of truth and others because they live orphans of love or because they have hunger and thirst for justice and peace for all of them do feel mercy and charity for them weep and pray but most of all do something to ease your pain or improve your life so yes you will be understanding my doctrine understanding my sacrifice and interpreting my will loving one another will be the only way to give fulfillment of my word and to please my spirit. I said on the cross through Yashawana, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. After many centuries, I can say again of all this humanity that it still does not know what it is doing, because it frequently changes the sense of the law or doctrine that I have revealed to him and violates them, believing he is honoring them and giving them compliance. If you understood and felt my teaching, love would run through your veins, love for your brothers, that they are part of me, but you are very far from loving each other, and of this you give evidence in almost all of your works. Remember in your commemorations that I, the Divine Master, out of love for you, left the spiritual kingdom, making myself a man to dwell with men that I left my kingdom to show myself in your world as a being at the service of the needy, that being in Yashawana, the father of all creation, I came between you to the most humble and to consecrate my life to you. My doctrine taught that the more you have, the more you have to give, and that the older you are, the more humble it should be. Who are those who imitate me at this time? Who are capable of descending from a throne or his seat to be confused among the poor and needy to give them life. I can't find them, despite your world being so vast and the humanity so numerous. When those examples are given in profusion on earth, then you can say that you are commemorating my word and my examples, that you are living them. From generation to generation and from time to time, men have been departing from the law's divine powers, thereby determining me a backwardness in the spiritual order. If you stop for a moment to contemplate your world, to look at it through your mind, as if you were on top of a mountain contemplating a city, you will observe that humanity has developed its passions and its intelligence, always applying them to earthly ends. If you analyze and meditate, you will find that no sign of true spirituality appears anywhere. Something that proves that man inhabits a being of light. When you descend from this mountain of your meditations, you will come down saddened, saddened with the knowledge that you have strayed far from the divine laws that govern spiritual life. In your path, you will meet the small and inferior beings, a bee, an ant, a worm, and you will say, Father, why do you not allow those beings, being inferior to us, to sin? and instead your spiritual children, like it is to us, if you let us sin. Ah, little ones, who dare to ask such foolish questions of your Lord? 
I have already surprised you envying the happiness and peace with which these creatures live. I have already seen you envy joy that exists in the nests where the birds have made a home. I have heard that when your heart has said, But do these beings deserve greater blessings than the children of God? Now I tell you that you ask like this, and you are intrigued because you do not know how to study my teaching until you find the truth. Don't you see that these creatures only have one dwelling place, which is the earth, and that is a right that they have his glory and his joy? Are you not seeing that they are induced to fulfill a force that is the law of nature? If they live within the law, they have to enjoy everything the law contains, which is love, peace, well-being, delight, activity, life. You men have the opportunity to know something that is beyond material nature, that is the spiritual life. For this, the path that leads to the kingdom of your father has been revealed to you. Moreover, I have given freedom to take the path or not, to ascend or descend, to approach or to move away, because it is the way of making true merits before the father and at the same time proving your love for him. Being irrational is guided by instinct, which is your inner voice, your teacher, your guide. It is like a light that comes from Mother Nature, and that illuminates the path which he has to travel in this life, also a path of struggles and risk. You men are guided by the spirit, you, the spirits, are guided by the conscience, which is the light that the Divine Spirit has deposited in his spiritual children. The destiny of the children of nature is on earth. There it begins, and there it ends. Instead, the fate of the spirit began in me, and will never end, because when it rises above the earthly life, when it goes beyond from the abodes of perfection, and to penetrate into eternity, you will go from one mansion to another, discovering new worlds of wisdom, enjoying more, and loving more. Do not stop meditating on your destiny, nor stop observing your inferior brothers, because in them you will find infinite examples of wisdom, which applied to your life will make you reap good fruits. From them take the harmony with which each species lives. Imitate the activity of those who are active. Take the examples of fidelity or of gratitude, are examples that contain divine wisdom, since they are my creatures also sprouted from me so that they surround you and accompany you in your world, so that you participate in what I have deposited in the earth, so that in them you can discover the voice that tells you that when you comply to the letter with the divine law and let yourself be induced by the voice of the consciousness, as they let themselves be guided by instinct, you will have to know harmony, you will have to know peace, and this will lead you to the multiplication of your goods to the abundance in spiritual and human progress. Do you think that whoever meditates deeply in all this is later capable of fomenting war? Do you think that whoever has clearly heard the voice of his conscience rises up to humiliate his fellow man? No, beloved people. Then come to the conclusion that you have to meditate on my revelations, that the world also has to meditate so that in those reflections the spirit rises, the mind becomes ecstatic, and in a word, men truly listen and obey the voice of the conscience. Meditate and teach to meditate the lesson of this day. It is a message that you have to take to the heart of your brothers with the tenderness which I have given it to you, because you have a mission to fulfill, and therefore I have come at this time to give you my word. But for this communication, I have not used those who have greatly cultivated their understanding and the wisdom of this world, but of those who in their humility have imitated my disciples of the second era. You, show my work without fear, because it has to enlighten the world throughout the ages. Prepare yourselves so that my word is written in your hearts, so that you may be an imitation of your own master, so that being humble, you may be my true disciples. Take the truth, so that with it, it lights up all mankind. Practice the virtues, and unify as one disciple. From this book, all will hear the teachings, 
and thus the last will be the first. Beloved people, with what dedication do you listen to this word that teaches you and announces events to you that in a short time you will see fulfilled in you? This humanity will take great strides toward spirituality. Its spirit will be able to go beyond human limits and reach the superior abodes to communicate with their brothers and receive the light that they have to offer them. He will also be able to descend the, to the plains where beings of little evolution stalled beings to help them come out of their poor condition and bring them to a better level. The scale by which the spirit ascends towards its perfection is very large. In it you will find beings of an infinity of different degrees and you will offer them something of what you have and they too, in turn, will give you some of their spiritual wealth. Then you will discover that this is not the only world that fights for its improvement. You will know that in all planets evolves the spirit, which palpitates and grows in all, fulfilling its destiny, and I want you to prepare so that you may make an alliance with your brothers, that you communicate with them, with that holy desire to recognize you, to love you, and help you. Do it in my name, and within the strictest obedience, through your thinking, and when you begin with that exercise, you will begin to interpret their requests, their teachings, and benefits. I hope that there is harmony with your brothers within and off this planet, which is now your home. Make ties of friendship. Ask for help when you need it, and also help those that ask you for what you have. How much do beings destined at this time love and protect you to bring you the knowledge of my new coming? and how beneficially influence humanity. Only I contemplate that constant work, and I know its merits. I bless you because your work is great. If you knew how to penetrate your spiritual life, you would see it surrounded by cares, by wonders that you owe to your spiritual benefactors. Their works in various missions in your world, without you even having a feeling of his goodness and his effort. I only tell you that their constant struggle is to return to order and justice the life of men. Help men in their difficult mission, understand their love, their selflessness, and become their collaborators in this great work. Not only in this time, but since the first man inhabited earth, the spirit world was sent and has manifested sharing with you sorrows and joys. I have ordered it so so that you do not feel alone or distant from your God brothers. When you return to simplicity, when you are in contact with these beings and look at them closely, you will recognize their work and you will bless them. And when you leave earth to undertake the journey to your next abode, you will come united with them, who became guardians of your life. And after knowing the virtue of your God brothers, do you not wish to be to your little brothers as your guardian angels? I am revealing to you what was hidden from your interpretation because I do not want you to ignore what is fundamental in your life, the immortality of your spirit. It's always ascending its path and its end is in me. Walk the path step by step. Live on earth, but always look at heaven. Think that you are living the eternal life and from the moment you have started your journey and that each test you pass it brings you closer to the Father, and each stage makes the time of your return shorter. You have seen the first lights of this age of spirituality, but you will not see its development in fullness. It will be your descendants who will continue your work, and I will grant you to continue cultivating your seed, as I have allowed the spirit of those who are your parents to continue watching over your fulfillment. Watch for the good of this world. Take my word to hearts. Many times you will be ignored by some, but in others it will find an echo, and in those you will overflow this teaching that I have given you so that you transmit to all your brothers. Today you have my word, manifesting the same and unique essence that in all times I have given you, love. The principles on which my law is founded and my doctrine is immutable and eternal. Today I come in spirit to manifest my truth and my presence through the divine light. 
as in the second era, I incarnated my word in Yashuana. I revealed my truth to you through the word and sealed it with the blood. It is necessary to reach the men, live with them, let myself feel and watch as they come and they feel, and to give them proof of the infinite love that my spirit feels towards men. I, the Messiah, through Yashawana the man, manifested the glory of the Father, his wisdom and his power. Power was used to work wonders for the good of those in need of faith in the spirit, light and understanding, and peace in the heart. That power, which is the very force of love, was poured out on those in need to give themselves with integrity to others, to the point that I did not use it for my own body, that I also needed it in the supreme hour. I did not want to use my power to avoid the intense suffering of my body, because by becoming man, it was in order to suffer for you, giving you a palpable, divine, and human proof of my infinite love and my mercy for all the little ones, for the needy, and for sinners. All the power that I have manifested for others, the same when cleaning a leper, giving light to the blind, and movement to the paralytic, who by converting sinners and raising the dead, all the power that I manifested before the mobs to give them proof of my truth, already proving to them my authority over the elements and my power over life and death. I did not even want to use it for me, letting my body live with passion and feel that pain. It is true that my power would have avoided all pain to my body, but what merit would I have had before you? What example would I have left within the reach of man if I had used my power to avoid pain? It was necessary to strip myself of my power in those moments, renounce the divine force to feel and live the pain of the flesh, sadness in the face of ingratitude, loneliness, agony, and death. That is why the lips of Yashawana asked for help in the supreme hour, because his pain was real. But it was not just the physical pain that overwhelmed the feverish and exhausted body of Yashawana. It was also the spiritual sensation of a God that through the body he was harassed and mocked by the blind, ungrateful, and arrogant children for whom he was giving that blood. Yashawana was strong because of the spirit that animated him which was the divine spirit and could have been physically insensitive to pain and invincible before the trials of his persecutors. But it was necessary for him to cry that felt that before the eyes of the crowd, he fell time after time, exhausted the forces of his matter, and that he died when the last drop of blood had escaped from his body. This is how my mission on earth was accomplished. Thus ended the existence of the world of the one whom days before the people had proclaimed king, just as they had entered Jerusalem. The same people who had received me went to accompany me to Calvary, and many who had sung, Hosanna, Hosanna, then they went to shout, Crucify him, crucify him. But also many who received me in their heart, prepared with love and faith, they followed me faithfully until the last moment letting their tears fall on the trace of blood that his master was leaving. For those who looked at me with the light of their spirit, I was the same God made man. For those who only saw me through their senses, I was not the truth, since my death as a man confused them by making them feel disappointed. These were the ones who scoffed, the one they called deceived. Remembering the vehemence with which Yashawana promised them a kingdom full of joys, but now seeing him bowed under the weight of the cross and later subject to a humiliating cross. They could not help but laughing, yelling that Yashawana was a false prophet who did not deserve to live. Poor ignorant understandings, poor materialized spirits that were confused before their own conjectures. Is he the son of God? Why has he not been saved from the hands of his oppressors and executioners? If in his voice and power in his right hand. Why did he not complain on the cross of having been abandoned? If he is life, he who raised the dead, why did he die at the hands of insignificant men? It was not yet time for the light to reach the spirit of those creatures. 
They would still have to walk the path of life to come to understand the divine truth of my pain and my death. Instead, those who loved with the Spirit, they did not have a moment of confusion or doubt. The more they saw their Lord suffer, greater was his admiration for those proofs of infinite love, of the most perfect justice and wisdom. The same thief, Demas, who everyone had said had a heart full of darkness, incapable of discovering an atom of my truth, knew how to know my divinity, precisely where others did not recognize her. On the cross, he knew how to look at my light. He managed to discover my love, and he saw the humility of Yashawana and the blindness of the world. And because he had suffered a lot on earth, and had been judged, and had known the scaffold, he understood and said to himself in his heart, It is good that I die on a cross as a thief and as a criminal, but for what do you offer this chalice to the master, to this man from whom you have only received goods? And seeing the patience and humility with which the just Yashawana was dying, he could not contain himself and exclaimed, Lord, when you are in your kingdom, remember me. Yes, beloved Demis, you were with me in the paradise of light and spiritual peace, where I took your spirit and award for your faith. Who would have told those who doubted in Yashawana, dying and bleeding, there lived a God, that in the thief who was dying at his right hand, a spirit of light was hidden. Time passed, and when the calm was reborn, many of those who denied and mocked me began to penetrate into the light of my truth, that his repentance was great and his love to follow me was unshakable. I had bequeathed to the world from the cross, the book of life and spiritual wisdom, a book to be analyzed and understood by men throughout the ages, centuries of ages and times. That is why I said to Mary, shaken with pain at the foot of the cross, woman, here is your son pointing his gaze to Yarn, who at the moment represented humanity, but the humanity converted into the good disciple of Christ, a spiritualized humanity. I spoke to John, saying, Son, here is your mother. Words that I am now going to explain to you. Mary represents purity, obedience, faith, tenderness, and humility. Each of these virtues is wrong of the latter, where I descended into the world and became a man in the bosom of that holy and pure woman. That tenderness, that purity, and that love are the divine bosom, where the seed of life is fruitful. That scale by which I descended to you to become a man and live with my children is the same that I present to you, that through it you may ascend towards me, transforming yourselves from men into spirits of light. Mary is the scale. Mary is the maternal womb. Look for her, and you will find me. My peace be with you. This has been a reading of the Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 11, Teaching 320. You can download this volume and the other 11 at coachinthefight.shop.